Hi, everyone. We're going to get started just in uh, uh, about a minute. Just give a couple more minutes for people to join. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's get started. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, depending on where you are in the world. My name is Miles Kelly. I'm the Executive Vice President of Marketing at Schedulo, and it's my great pleasure today uh, to be presenting uh, with the uh, co-founder and CEO of Schedulo on this topic of reopening the world at scale, high capacity scheduling. I uh, really appreciate you uh, joining us today. Uh, this is gonna be a relatively short presentation. We are gonna very much uh, to the point uh, lighter on content, but definitely uh, a great opportunity to hear firsthand uh, from Matt on uh, both the genesis of high capacity scheduling, how it works, and how it's being used uh, worldwide uh, today. So just to take care of a couple of our um, uh, agenda items, uh, again, we'll be working through the, uh, the welcome, a uh, chance to introduce uh, Matt, um, and then definitely uh, spend the majority of our time talking about uh, this, this concept, this, uh, this new uh, offering uh, around high capacity scheduling. And we will have time for wrap up uh, and Q&A. Uh, so if you do have questions, go ahead and feel free to submit those during the, uh, the webinar. We'll make sure to cover off those uh, at the tail end. And this is being recorded. So uh, this will be made available as we conclude uh, the presentation. As I mentioned, I am the uh, Executive Vice President of uh, Marketing for Schedulo. And uh, Matt is our co-founder. Uh, and uh, CEO. Um, so we're going right to the source on, uh, on this uh, capability. So uh, really nice to have you join us today, Matt. Thank you. Um, a quick background on Schedulo, if you're not familiar, the company was founded in 2013. Um, and we're really focused on the 80% of the workforce uh, that doesn't work in a traditional office setting. Um, we call those deskless workers, oftentimes referred to as mobile workers or uh, frontline workers but we're really focused on taking a platform approach to solving for the challenges uh, for those deskless workers, really helping uh, enterprises, uh, mid-size, large organizations, uh, really focus on how to manage, uh, engage, and analyze uh, their deskless uh, workforce. As I mentioned, we are a, a global organization. We are actually founded in uh, Brisbane, down in Australia. Uh, we do have an office in San Francisco, office in Vietnam, as well as in the UK. Uh, so definitely a, a global presence, um, raised $40 million uh, to date, and some high profile companies uh, and organizations like the American Red Cross, Johnson & Johnson, uh, and hundreds of others uh, uh, have done business with Schedulo. So definitely a, uh, a, a strong foundation uh, from which to be talking about this great uh, topic today. And we are a leader. Uh, this, this concept of deskless work is really at the intersection, if you look at this from an industry perspective, uh, really at the intersection between workforce management and field service management. And we happen to, uh, to actually be a leader in both of those according to, uh, to G2. So um, that's really the, uh, the background, the foundation. And once again, welcome Matt. So why don't we just start at the very beginning? Um, let's talk about you know, what was the genesis for high capacity scheduling. Thanks Miles and uh, great to be talking with you and, and great to be here. Um, so, so uh, high, high capacity scheduling as a problem and as a product um, from Scheduler really came from, you know, as COVID-19 hit and then I think set in globally, um, it was incredibly important for us uh, at Scheduler as, as a leadership team and as a whole company, in fact, to anchor ourselves uh, on our values. I think it's incredibly important as a company that you can uh, depend and rely on your values and your mission in times of crisis more than ever. And for us, as we think about, you know, one of our values being, uh, you know, customer driven uh, and caring first uh, being another, we thought about, you know, what, what do we need to do? What do we need to do for our existing customers? 
um, you know, frontline and deskless workers, people that don't work behind a desk or weren't in an office before COVID-19 and don't necessarily have the luxury of just going into their home and working from a, a laptop or a computer like we all do, uh, they've got to be uh, out in people's homes, in businesses, in the community, delivering essential services, delivering health care, uh, you know, hot water systems still break down, solar systems still need to be installed on people's homes, and, you know, the elderly still need to be cared for. Uh, you know, so I, we, we noticed that, you know, our customer base and, the, and our users, uh, the people that we care so much about, were uh, incredibly impacted by this motion that we saw with COVID-19. So we thought, how do we connect and help them, but also how do we connect and help uh, companies that we're talking to that are really at the front line of problems uh, uh, related to COVID-19. And uh, I had the privilege of speaking with many CEOs and leaders at companies that were solving different problems in reaction to COVID-19. Uh, but one in particular stood out. It was a, it was a phlebotomy and serology laboratory testing company, uh, one of the largest in the United States called Bioreference Labs. And they were being contracted by governments and municipalities and large organizations all over the place to uh, not only test for COVID-19, but stand up and help governments stand up locations that allowed people to come and be tested. And one of the challenges they were facing and governments were facing and institutions were facing at the time was how do you stand up a location or enable a location, publicize it to the community so that you can get tested uh, and then not have them all show up at the same time, uh, stuck in traffic jams and in their cars for five hours waiting to get tested, sometimes not tested at all, uh, you know, which led to a really unsafe environment for frontline and deskless workers that were delivering the testing and members of the community. And this was a problem I thought, you know, that our platform as it orients itself around the complexities and messiness of regular work that happens, uh, you know, outside of a year like this year, uh, the complexities of scheduling and organizing people and scheduling and organizing work and optimizing that process, ultimately engaging with that work on a mobile device and analyzing that work and what it means to an organization. These are all fundamentals that uh, you can build upon and solve very interesting challenges. And I think the, the management of the capacity of these sites and locations to uh, ultimately drive towards an outcome of a safe operating environment that was well organized, scheduled and orchestrated to allow members of the community to go and get tested. It was really the genesis of a product that we then you know, of our platform built in uh, under a month. And it's since gone on to be used uh, to help run and facilitate the, the National Basketball Association's uh, Bubble League in uh, Florida early this year, the NFL Major League Soccer, uh, public education systems in New York, the prison system, uh, helping uh, every citizen in, in New Jersey and New York get tested. So it's just some uh, phenomenal use cases and scenarios that uh, I think exemplify, you know, what's possible uh, when you think about the complexities of scheduling and people and organization and deskless productivity, uh, but also what's possible when you do anchor yourself uh, against your company values and uh, simply try to help. And it's been a wonderful uh, journey working not only with them, but uh, now many, many organizations as they've worked through, you know, testing at scale and this problem of how do you organize many people uh, trying to be scheduled at the same location in order to uh, uh, facilitate public health. And uh, it's a great initiative to be, a proud, uh, to be part of, and I'm incredibly proud of our team here at Scheduler, the uh, incredible effort and energy they put into this project and uh, the work they do every day. Yeah, and one of the things that you and I have talked a lot about is that, you know, under duress, oftentimes in downturns of economies, that's actually an excellent time to, uh, to innovate. Can you talk a little bit more about the actual impact that bioreference? Because obviously that's been a, that was the initial use case, but they've also been quite successful. Maybe uh, touch on some of the aspects of that. Yeah, you know, I think for companies like bioreference laboratories and, and many others, in fact, that, uh, put up their hand and said, hey, we, we have the capacity and we have the ability to pivot our regular business of testing blood samples and testing uh, all sorts of things uh, to help right now. Um, you know, I think that uh, for them to be able to lean in and deliver a model that could support governments, institutions at scale, 
you know, was an example of a, a, an organization innovating around their regular business model. And we've seen that many times, I think, through COVID-19. And uh, we'll continue to see it, I think, as uh, the muscle of rapid innovation and pivoting into you know, problems at a time of crisis uh, has, has demonstrated such value, uh, not only for them as a company, but for the public as well. And uh, you know, I think that's important for us as a company, uh, uh, like uh, you know, I spoke about, I think incredibly wonderful experience to just be able to move quickly and innovate in times of crisis where you know, it, the need is so clear um, and uh, the opportunity to help is so obvious. I think the one constant in all of this is change. You know, as we really better understood what was happening with COVID-19, uh, you know, we didn't know what we didn't know, and that goes you know, for really everybody. Um, and uh, you know, I think in the spirit of innovation, you also have to be ready for continual change and continual improvement as you learn. Uh, you know, and experience something that we've really not had experience, uh, you know, uh, in really in the last sort of 80 years. And certainly in my lifetime, how do you innovate into that, learn from it and continue innovating uh, through that process? It's incredibly important. And it was wonderful to just continue helping and, and still help today, uh, bioreference laboratories and other organizations yeah. as change remains almost the one constant. <laughs> oh, for, yeah, for sure. And you mentioned, uh, you know, bioreference being in the right place at the right time, you know, being able to also help, you know, the NFL, uh, the NBA, Major League Soccer, uh, you know, New York City schools, all that kind of the get back to work. And still, you know, from a testing perspective, it's obviously particularly still relevant here in the United States. Um, and I think they've eclipsed over a, a million appointments and bookings with uh, this scalable platform. So uh, uh, definitely a good example on the, the high capacity side, just the, the, the sheer volume. When you let's shift gears a little bit now, just you know, talking about really kind of how it works and, and just functionally, like what what are the the pieces that we're connecting here? Where does Schedulo sit in kind of a typical uh, architectural design? You know, maybe you could talk a little bit about how it how it actually works. Yeah, I think in the process of testing, um, in in particular, as sort of one use case, there are many upstream and downstream business processes, uh, obviously, that relate to testing. Uh, that touch you know, the tests themselves, the inventory of tests, uh, the, the, uh, the, the publicity of uh, test availability out to members of the public, et cetera. And, and then obviously a, a considerable uh, human capital footprint uh, to uh, collect and, and uh, administer tests at scale. And a really important part is how you allow individuals and members of the public to go to a uh, a website or through a, an application and uh, self schedule and self uh, register themselves for a test and an appointment in the future. Um, when you're doing that at small scales, and I think we've all used some kind of appointment management system in the past and scheduling management uh, system in the past. When you're doing that in a, a, a you know, simple sort of doctor's surgery environment or a, a, a hair salon or a, a booking yourself into, uh, a, you know, a, a chiropractor or something like that, at very small scale, the, these problems are fairly straightforward. Um, these, this problem becomes very challenging when you're trying to get millions of people and uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of people at the same time accessing this technology. And you have to think about uh, how to make sure that that's performant and stable and accessible uh, to members of the public very quickly and doesn't collapse and doesn't fall down and uh, can ultimately drive the confidence, I think, that we've all been looking for uh, through this year in organizations, in technology, as you know, these uh, institutions that help us move forward and ultimately uh, 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 get through this challenge. So, you know, scalability of this problem is, is or, or this, uh, this uh, challenge is certainly one of the largest problems. The footprint for us really came down to helping companies manage and administer sites that were popping up in a fire department or a police station or a shopping mall, Madison Square Garden, you know, regardless of the size, how do they manage the capacity and throughput of those locations? Uh, how do they manage, um, you know, the availability of that location? When does it open? When does it close? Do they go through a shutdown period, et cetera? And then ultimately what that means from that, that site and that location's ability to accept people into it. Then how do you express that availability to members of the public so they can self-schedule themselves, uh, then drive reminders and automation to make sure they arrive on time? 
And then a mobile application that's used by frontline and deskless workers on site to do contactless check-in and scanning of people as they come in, make sure they're on time, accept any walk-ins that may come through if that's uh, part of their business process. And really for us, that's been the footprint of uh, this problem, managing the sites, uh, uh, making sure that you can self-schedule at scale and then uh, managing day of processes with contactless check-in. Yeah, that contactless part was definitely something that stood out in the first couple of customers that I spoke with, just obviously with, with COVID such a concern, um, the ability to have kind of a QR code be at the core, at the center of that check-in process that really both streamlined things, but also made it uh, particularly um, secure. Um, you know, I, I oftentimes think of kind of COVID testing as one side of the coin, but now, of course, uh, we're well in the throes of thinking about uh, vaccine administration. Can you talk a little, little, a little bit about that use case and kind of what's happening now? I know that you've been kind of on the inner circle on uh, how those are being administered, the actual process for these uh, distribution of, of millions of these things. I'd love for you to share maybe some of your thoughts on uh, the, 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 the intersection of that whole process and high capacity scheduling. Yeah, you know, I think that uh, getting people tested and, and the, the, the high capacity scheduling product that we built to support and help testing as we've talked about uh, was a great learning exercise for us and also a wonderful experience for what was going to come next. I think uh, as uh, the genesis has really occurred from you know, making sure people were able to be tested uh, and uh, you know, that process over the last eight months uh, now into how do we sort of take that and uh, really apply hyperscale to this as uh, we try and ensure that as many members of the public uh, have access to the vaccine as possible, as governments and organizations allow, you know, over the next uh, six months, and in fact, probably years uh, into the future, how do we make sure that this is uh, available to as many people as possible. So where we thought, you know, the scale of testing and making sure that that was uh, available and highly performant at scale uh, was certainly uh, critical and important. I think the scale that we'll see again with vaccine administration is going to be a whole nother uh, order of magnitude as we sort of see millions of people uh, needing to schedule and, and ultimately be uh, passed through the process of vaccine administration. Yeah, and I think what's interesting too is that, you know, uh, even as the head of marketing for Schedulo, sometimes scheduling can be viewed as a relatively simple or straightforward or basic functionality. But uh, when you start to, you know, it's, it's the classic kind of tip of the iceberg, when you start to think about the uh, the workflows and the, uh, the, the balancing of all of these moving resources, just the confirmation process itself, especially when you're talking about millions uh, of, of, of people, millions of doses, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real uh, you know, exponential challenge that, uh, that blows up quite quickly. Um, you know, talking a little bit about uh, on, the, on the vaccination side, again, the other side of the, uh, the coin on, on testing, um, which you did well. The, the other piece that I wanted to just, you know, as I, every time I get a chance to talk to an executive about, um, you know, the, it's, it's quick to highlight the wins, um, but especially through such a challenging year or a challenging yet innovative time, there are always pitfalls. There are always challenges that are faced along the way. And maybe what, you know, a lesson or two that you can share or that you've learned uh, that, that uh, you know, if you could do it all over again, you might avoid, but what are some of the things that you, uh, you learned through this process? You know, I, th I think uh, as a technology company and people that think about product, um, uh, particularly in moments like this and particularly with use cases like this, these are really new scenarios that we're all dealing with and working with and trying to solve. And, uh, you know, I, I think that um, through these moments, uh, I, I sort of touched on this before, but you really need a, a beginner's mind and a, and a mindset that change is really a constant that we're all working with and dealing with. And I think we had no idea as we uh, you know, really kicked off this journey uh, eight or nine months ago, how much change was going to happen uh, everywhere, you know, in our company as we change the way that we work and where we work from and how we interact with one another, how we work with our customers and really care for them uh, as well and, and help them succeed through this period. Uh, but importantly, in relation to this use case, the amount of change that was coming downstream. And I think uh, uh, looking back, um, being 
as prepared as possible for the amount of change, the amount of flexibility required for us as an organization as we learnt more and more about the different permutations of how testing was being managed, now how vaccines are going to be managed, complexities there. You know, I think the, the biggest lesson learnt is just how um, prepared for constant change we need to be as we look uh, forward into you know, vaccine administration and other use cases that no doubt will come from this. And uh, now that we've sort of solved this problem and proved that we can do it at scale, uh, making sure that we can continue to adapt and continue to learn, uh, given that uh, you know, the rate of change right now is just so rapid. Uh, we have had such a wonderful opportunity to work with great customers and great organizations that are really doing the hard work here at the front line. And I think that's just an ongoing lesson that we learn uh, here at Scheduler. You know, I think our customers are the greatest source for us of learning and uh, being as close, uh, closely connected to them as possible as they're going to go through and adapt to all of this change. And then our responsibility to react to that and provide technology that can uh, facilitate such a high, a rapid uh, rate of change is so important. And it was a wonderful lesson to continue, you know, keep learning, I think. For yeah. Us. yeah, I think one of the observations I, I've had as well is, um, you know, we oftentimes talk about kind of the kindness aspect to the, the schedule of culture, but, you know, in a, in a very popular uh, theme for 2020 is, you know, we're all in this together. But what's been interesting in particular about solving the scale challenges with testing and with vac vaccination administration is really just the, the willingness and the want uh, for companies, for individuals to, to be helpful, uh, to try to really solve for this problem from, a, from the heart. And uh, you know, certainly the companies that we've been working with, the, the prospects that we've been working with, the state and local governments that we've been working with, uh, the underlying uh, drive really is to, uh, to be helpful. And uh, I think that's been you know, unique uh, from my perspective and obviously uh, not been through a pandemic before, but that's been uh, quite uh, refreshing or maybe even pleasing uh, despite all the challenges and, and, and some of the pain uh, along the way. So when we, when we think about, you know, again, a very common question when I get a chance to talk with CEOs, not only lessons learned, but of course, you know, what do you see around the bend? So what, what's up next for maybe for Schedulo, but for, for high capacity scheduling in particular? Yeah, you know, I think you, you touched on a, on a great point, and I think it has been a period of great uh, partnership and uh, 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 focus as we think about, you know, our small ecosystem of, uh, you know, people and companies that we work with very closely in order to deliver uh, capability and ultimately help uh, as well. And it has been a wonderful period of just locking arms and figuring this out together. And it's been a wonderful spirit of partnership uh, as we've uh, you know, worked through this. And I think that will continue through vaccine administration. I probably have never seen this level of collaboration and communication between uh, you know, some of the largest technology companies in the world as they collectively try and solve this problem together. So it's wonderful to be a part of. And I think for us, you know, our focus is really turning to you know, uh, preempting, I think, a lot of that change that's going to come with vaccines. I don't think this is going to be a uh, a fast, uh, you know, silver bullet uh, from a, from a, a timeline and a, and a process perspective. I think this will be ongoing for some time. I think there'll definitely be an initial wave and probably, hopefully, considerable relief as uh, we all start to think about the light at the end of the tunnel uh, of all of this. And I think we have to adapt what we've learned out of this period as a company and think about. Uh, not just what's next for our product and our platform and the relationships we have with our customers, but what's next for the way that we work together and how can we take some of the wonderful collaboration and communication and partnership uh, and, uh, you know, uh, heart for our community into the future and apply that uh, to, to what's coming. You know, I think that there's going to be a lot learnt over the next three months, I would say, as the first wave of really vaccine administration at scale starts to occur uh, all over the world. And we'll learn a lot from that period as will governments and health institutions everywhere. And we need to apply that to ultimately what comes next for our high capacity scheduling product. We also wanna make sure that this product is able to be used in other use cases in the future. This is a challenge that exists uh, uh, even without the context of COVID-19. 
and the organization of other vaccines, the flu vaccine and things like this, and perhaps uh, using this technology in the future to apply it to use cases and problems that are more sustained than uh, perhaps COVID-19 will be. Uh, thinking about um, you know, large scale events and the organization of people and the importance of you know, helping people organize the time of arrival and making sure they do that safely is not necessarily limited to just the, the challenges that we've experienced this year. So I'm looking forward to making sure that this product continues uh, in the future and continues to grow and expand and can be used by all sorts of uh, wonderful organizations and uh, institutions in the future. You know, as we think about um, deskless and frontline productivity, um, uh, for, for, for me, what continues to excite uh, myself and I know you, Miles, and the rest of our company is what is next for the deskless and frontline uh, workforce. This is over 80% of the workforce globally. People that don't sit in an office and don't sit behind a desk, they're highly mobile. The work they do is difficult and challenging, particularly in times like this. Uh, the operational mechanics of movement and location and travel, their availability, these are all complex problems and we really only just scratch the surface. I think of solving that after seven years uh, here at, at Scheduler since founding. I still believe that to be true and there's so much more work to do and so many more wonderful problems to solve. So for us and uh, for myself, I think that's what I think about uh, in terms of what's coming up uh, over the next year. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate that. And I also appreciate your time today, Matt. Um, these have been uh, uh, very challenging times and days uh, while we're excited about it. I know you've been pulling a lot of the uh, the 20 hour days. So I, I do wanna appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk with us today. Um, I did wanna just uh, shift gears now. So a chance to uh, address some of the questions that we've uh, received. Um, one here was about uh, the, the technology that surrounds uh, this deployment. Uh, what does high capacity scheduling need to integrate with uh, in order to be uh, deployed? Yeah, it's a good question. I think scheduling an appointment is just one part of a much bigger uh, puzzle. And I think, I, you know, I mentioned some of the partnerships that we've been able to uh, really uh, uh, mature uh, throughout this year with companies like Salesforce, uh, which uh, organizations and governments are using to stand up all sorts of uh, uh, vaccine administration management, testing management, uh, the, the, the support of public health processes and uh, uh, patient information at scale. And, uh, you know, I, I think we are just one part of a very complex puzzle here and uh, companies like Salesforce, you know, infrastructure at scale with uh, Amazon and Microsoft and others important to our ability uh, to really scale this solution to make sure that it's uh, secure uh, and uh, safe and ultimately really performant at scale. Right. Yeah, and then um... The other piece is, you know, just from a, a best practices perspective, you know, is it recommended, you know, kind of customers, is it simple out of the box to deploy uh, by individual customers or is typically a system integrator required? You know, I think if, if uh, you're looking at the much broader problem of vaccine administration from end to end, uh, and with this being a, a, a part of this, you know, I, I think uh, system integration partners and uh, uh, consulting uh, organizations are always critical as they pull all these pieces together at speed and work with organizations and the various business models that are being deployed. You know, I'm really proud of the work that we've done to make sure that our part of this uh, process, which is uh, technically challenging and very, very important uh, to the uh, uh, to, to uh, the, this overall uh, landscape of, of process, uh, can actually be stood up very quickly. And so if appointment scheduling at scale and the capacity management of sites and locations, uh, you know, is uh, uh, important as you look at, you know, processes in the future, we can move very quickly and you can actually stand this up uh, incredibly efficiently and move forward. It's very configurable and flexible uh, as we think about that rate of change. So, you know, very proud of the work that we've done there. And, uh, you know, in, in, in an isolated sense, uh, this is very, uh, very rapid uh, to stand up and get going, but certainly uh, and typically part of a, a much bigger journey for organizations. And then our last one um, is, is really about, I guess, from an industry perspective, is this typically deployed by healthcare organizations or government organizations or both? 
you know, I think we'll see both, right? I think the, you know, uh, the administration of a vaccine globally uh, requires uh, help from everyone and all sorts of institutions. And I think in some jurisdictions and some countries that will be led by public health and, uh, you know, state or federal public health initiatives. Uh, in others, that will be supplemented by not only public health infrastructure and workforces, but private health and uh, other providers as well, um, volunteers and, uh, you know, uh, organizations like the Red Cross and NGOs and things like this, I think we'll probably see engagement with as well. So I think it will change and, and vary depending on the country and depending on the jurisdiction, but um, you know, large health uh, organizations and governments is uh, the likely footprint. Excellent. All right. Well, once again, Matt, I think we'll uh, we'll wrap it there. Um, really appreciate your perspective on this uh, innovative uh, solution, particularly relevant in uh, 2020 around high capacity scheduling. We appreciate everyone's time today. And uh, Matt, once again, really appreciate uh, you joining us. And uh, that'll uh, conclude our presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Miles. Thanks, everyone.